How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and welcome back to our playthrough of Fall From Heaven 2, the high fantasy mod for Civilization 4. And in this episode we are playing the Momus scenario and we are about to take out Duke Salos here hopefully. So Duke Salos and I have had a rather contentious past here. He has a pretty amazing army compared to me. Uh, he's still more powerful than me according to the demographics or to the, the info screen, the stats right here as you can see. Uh, but he's still quite powerful. We've successfully taken out two of his cities thus far, or three. I think we've taken out three total, or oh, four. He used to have one down here as well. And right there is one, two. Uh, he captured two over here, so those are two that I also captured back from him. So one of the things that uh, I'm going to be doing here is taking an opportunity to heal, I think. Oh, wait. How many of my units are damaged? Uh, I think it's just that one. Okay. We're going to approach his city like this, and I think I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and use the ritualists to begin doing some collateral damage here, so that way he is less inclined to attack me immediately. We won't be attacking this turn, obviously, but um, just doing that preemptive collateral damage means that his units are vastly weakened. So now I'm also curious about this Raging Seas spell. Uh, it does damage to all non land and units that are near the ocean, but it can it damage units past a certain point. Like, I've completely damaged all of these axemen and stuff in this city now, uh, up to the damage limit allowed for the Ritualists. If I use Raging Seas, can we damage them more? This is something I'm interested in finding out, so we're going to be trying that this turn. Uh, maybe you should wait until next turn, because <laughs> next turn, he won't get to heal, and I'll be able to damage him again and attack. So we're going to wait until next turn, and then we're going to try that Raging Seas spell. So how about that? <sighs> workers, why is this city building workers? This is useless to me. Just build research then. We don't need any more worthless workers. Okay, fingers crossed here that we don't get wiped out in one turn. Okay, that's nice. We didn't get attacked. Nice, okay. So let's first start by bombarding the defenses of the city down. Just gonna use the catapults here. And wow, it's a hundred, huh? Yeah, this city's gonna take a couple turns to bombard down, it looks like. Because I used all three giants and both catapults, and I'm still only down to 45%. So maybe we should wait another turn, an additional turn. It's a good question. Completely damaged that imp, apparently. The imps are very resistant to fire damage. Yeah. I think since we're not going to be attacking this turn, let's go ahead and skip the turn, and hopefully next turn we will be down to a reasonable point. Uh, one other thing that I'm going to do here is grab Falamar out of my city over here. Where is Falamar? Why oh, am Falamar? I was interested in grabbing... Guybrush Threepwood, wherever he is. at. The, oh, there he is. Okay, I was sending him over there. Um, yeah, because he's my hero, and I really don't see any reason not to use him since everybody's at war at this point. Should be okay. So, let's just ignore that unit, and see what happens next turn. Okay, he hasn't attacked yet. He's bringing a settler over here, though. As you can see, we've trained a worker, and work has now begun on a worker. What? I told you to stop working on workers. What the hell? I told you to build research. Okay, let's turn the automation off here. Turn off production automation. That's probably why it was happening. It's like they want to build this... This um, conspiracy of workers. It's ridiculous. How many sleeping workers does one person need in a city before the AI realizes that nothing needs to be improved anymore? Just... Um, outrageous at this point just bombarding this stuff here we should be able to get down to zero yeah there we go so now that we're down to zero we can actually have some confidence here in being able to attack after this bombarding there we go and like I said before we want to use the raging seas spell so let's try this one so wait no, just, just a second. What What is... It's 3.6 for the best Axemen. Most, all of them are 3.6, basically. So let's see if it damages them at all. I don't know if it will. 
Yeah, they actually did. It knocked that one down to two point six. Wow, that's quite significant. Holy hell. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, well, that's interesting. Uh, this diseased corpse is not ready to attack. That one was 99 99.9, 99.9, 99.9, 99.8, 99.9, 99.9, 99.9, 99.9. Wow, these odds are great. It's capital. I wonder if it will fall this turn. I doubt it, but holy hell. Like, everything we attack with has great odds now. Okay, that Ritualist can't attack. <sighs> he still has a lot in that city. Wait, can my Giants attack out of curiosity? No. Because okay, they bombarded the city already this turn. But we can use our other Ritualists here. All of whom have great odds. What about my hunter? Even my hunter has great odds. Wow. There we go. I mean, that is pretty massive. Look at that. It's a lot of units without a single loss. So that Raging Seas spell, in combination with... Uh, with the Ritualists, bombarding them beforehand can be pretty devastating. I mean, I'm not even kidding. Look at that. It'll be interesting to see how much his power drops in the next turn due to that. I have, an, I have a suspicion it's fairly significant. Let's see, your power. Um, well, we can't see a whole lot, but you can maybe you can just make out there. There's a very thin line. It drops to about here, it looks like. So... Maybe we shave 10% of his power off. And right there he built the other cities, so... Uh, that's something we'll have to take out afterwards. Perpentak has completed Pillar of the Chains. Pillar of Chains. Uh, there was something special about that. I wonder, but I forget what it is. Okay. No need to do any further bombarding there. Okay, this unit has another promotion coming. Good odds once again. Why not? Let's get this taken care of here. There's an Imp Catapult and a Settler left. Which we should be able to take out here. Just gonna promote that one. And there we go. So the big question here is... Do I keep the city? I think we do. Because this city has uh, the wonder in it, right? Yeah, the Stigmata of the Unborn. It is it is the wonder for my religion, so I think we keep this. And that means that I probably want to bolster it a little bit, so I'm going to move some of these other diseased corpses in here to help make it a little bit more resistant to attack. And then the rest of... Oh, is that a worker? Yeah, we just delete the worker. I don't need that. The rest of these units... Well, minus that hawk, obviously. Can skip the stern. We have a workboat here. What on earth could this be? Okay, this requires whaling boats. There we go. And here we have Guybrush Threepwood. He still doesn't have all of his experience. That. He can get 100 experience for free. I think I'm going to send them over here uh, to harangue this city. That he just built. I don't know. We'll see. What should I build here? Um, let's build a courthouse. Falmar's Golden Age has begun. Why on earth would that happen? Falmar has completed the Bone Palace. Ah, okay. I completed a wonder that gave me a Golden Age. That would explain it. It wasn't some sort of arbitrary event that happened. <laughs> So I don't see him approaching me with anything else. What I want to do here is just move the rest of the stack into that city. And then we're going to heal him all up before we attempt to siege his other major city, I think. 
So let's just heal there. I'm going to send Thalmar over there. Let's build the workboats. And I think that's it for this turn. Let me see. What does he have in this city, out of curiosity? He has an imp, an imp, so two imps, a catapult, three hellhounds, and an archer. That should not be too difficult to take out. I'm curious as to why he gets rated so high in power yet. If you look at it, he dropped fairly significantly now, but look, he's still more powerful than me according to this. Like, I'm here. He's there. Even though I hardly see any units of his. So it's really interesting how the game weights, you know, his power versus mine, or what his units are worth versus mine. Am I at war with this person here? No, okay. Oh, that's Purpin Dog. That's why. How many more turns? One more turn. Okay, yeah, we can certainly afford to allow that to go one more turn to finish healing up. And uh, one of the things that we could build over here with these workboats are some new pirate coves. Now that we removed the krakens from this area. So that, yeah, we most certainly should build more workboats over here. So I'm just going to set this city up to build a workboat instead. We have a worker here. Just skip that turn. Here you have a hellhound. Oh, what are the odds? 99.9. I might as well try taking that out. Now he just has an axeman, a hellhound, and an imp in that city. There's a catapult over there. But okay, and this is the turn that we move out. Workboat in Dunwich has been completed. Yes, let's move that into position. Probably somewhere like right over there. We've constructed an aqueduct. Work has begun in the library. So we want to move most of our units out here. But a few of them I want to stay. So what's the most effective way to go about doing this? We could do it like this, where we tell we select all units, and then we just remove like a couple from the stack. E.g. like this. By double clicking on them. It means that when we click on the rest of the stack, they will move willingly. Let's see? I should have actually done it with all units rather than all units of one type. But that's the general idea of how to easily move a lot of units out of the city uh, with while at the same time leaving some of those units in the city. I'm just going to leave the hunter there as well. And then these three can all fortify. They're not exceptionally powerful, obviously. One more turn will be within range. I'm just going to automate that worker. Here we have a great profit. Can't really do anything with... Uh, yeah, we can't do anything with them. We already have our holy city built. Oh, there's this holy city that I could build. It's called the Nox Noctis. I don't see any reason not to. We'll see what happens. What are our odds here? 99.9. .9. Might as well attack the city. I might be able to take that city out with um, Guybrush 3 point yet. Kadok. Let's advance here. Guybrush has a new promotion available. Uh, we could go for either melee or city attack. I think we should go with city attack here. Because we are attacking a city. So I'm going to remove that unit. Hawk's going to do some hawking. And... Oh, now I have the ability to reveal. Apparently all my units that were not in cities were hidden or something. Let me see here. Oh, Valmar wasn't. I think they had to be in my board. I don't think any unit was actually hidden by it. But yeah, building the Nox Nox just can do that. Interestingly enough, let's just bombard that whole thing. Luckily, none of my units are getting hit by that. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for this turn. So, let's do the bombarding down to 36%. Let's do the power move. Let's take out 85% versus that imp. Those are not great odds. How are they so bad? The imp has only 3.2 strength, and I'm 6 strength. Because it's the amount of promotions that he has. Okay, well, we won at 85%, so I guess it really doesn't matter at that point. Uh, here's our other fishing boat. Let's try to get with a reasonable distance away from that pirate cove to build another one. Now we have Guybrush versus an imp, and the odds are good. Let's capture that. What does he have in here? A mage guild and the forge right off the bat. But we're going to burn that. 
Here we have another frigate. It just leaves a couple of imps over here to take care of. Which we should be able to do in another turn or so, because next turn I'll have his defense is fully bombarded down. So, there we go. <clears throat> oh, and now my units can be upgraded to iron weapons, because uh, the trade routes are connected over there to the road, as you can see, to my main territory. So this city that I just captured of this now has the ability to upgrade my army to... Or upgrade my army using the forge. I think there's a forge in here. Maybe not. Huh. No, I guess just being in the city that was connected to my trade network was enough to upgrade them then. Nice, okay. Uh, let's get... Okay, we already did the bombarding? Yes. Okay, let's launch the attack. That was 80%. Not the hottest, but it, that was the hard one for sure. A 68%, wow. I still want at that one, huh? I'm getting, I'm getting careless here, apparently. But uh, so far I haven't paid the price for doing so. 89% when there's one imp left. Okay, there we go. That's Duke Salos down. I'd gladly stay and win this contest, but I have other duties to attend to. So let me examine the city first. I don't think there's any reason to... Well, it has an academy in it. There's really no reason not to keep it. Let's keep it. We're making plenty of gold. And by keeping it, it sort of ensures that other civilizations aren't going to bother me in that area. So we have one civilization there. I think we have two civilizations left to remove, and then we should be declared the winners. So that, uh, hopefully we can get that done relatively quickly. All those units were upgraded to iron weapons. Very nice. And here's Guybrush. Send them back to my territory to heal a little bit. And then, uh, here we have the Hawk. We're going to move the Hawk back into this city to be with my main stack. That way he can do some scouting when we get over there to those other two enemies. What I like to build in here, I think we already had a courthouse in this city. How about a walls? Are there any walls? Otherwise, we just build something that gives us some culture, I suppose. Monument. All this territory is also improved already, so that's a nice boon. So, yeah, next we will just have to start working on those other civilizations over there. Completed animal handling gives us the ability to build a ranger, which is pretty powerful. Uh, just a second here. I gotta move all these units into the city. And there we go, a little bit more. A few more of them have been upgraded to iron weapons. I just want to heal them all here before we set out. Um, yeah, just fortify that. Fortify that. Delete these workers, probably. I have enough workers, so there's really no reason to keep this many around here. Okay. I'm just going to let Guybrush heal there. And it really doesn't matter what exactly it is that we research at this time. I think we're just going to go all the way for war horses, so I don't have to be repeatedly trying to pick that out every few turns. Because that can get a little bit tedious, I understand. <sighs> that city's building workers now, huh? Let's just automate this one. That, that, that's really unbelievable. What, what, what kind of automation is that? Worker. Worker. This tile needs an improvement. And I have you automated. Why would you go back to sleep in the city when I have tiles that need to be improved? What? How does that make any sense? Can't trust the AI to do anything for you, apparently. Yeah, that city, the resistance has ended. Uh, okay. They always, like, whenever you do the entire stack, they always want you to use the, the hawk first. Which can be pretty annoying. How many turns to heal? One turn. Okay, we're going to stick in there one more turn. Let's fin- Oh, I think I know why. You're being attacked by this, by a male Syndra. Maybe the AI is not so dumb after all. Ha ha ha. If he saw that coming from that far away, that is pretty impressive. So, I think we want to upgrade our units here. I'm going to upgrade these guys to uh, boarding parties. So they should be stronger now. Let's see here. Yeah, it upgrades them to seven. I think from strength of six. 7-7 seven, seven, and 7-7, seven, seven, yeah. And then we should also... Wait. Why can't I upgrade that to a longbow? Is it over here? Yeah, okay, it's over here. I'm, I'm going to upgrade that one to a longbow. And this archer as well. 
And then the rest of these diseased corpses, I'm going to gather these together and I'm going to send them over there to, that, to help reinforce that city as well. Um, maybe even this swordsman. It's better to preemptively act here than wait. Because this is a, it's a fairly significant stack. Uh, it could be a problem. So apparently we still are at war with all the other civilizations, aren't we? Yeah, except for Perpentok, of course, because we're never at war with Perpentok. And he also has a couple of his ships over here. I'm going to tell my frigates to try to intercept these, I think. Hmm. Now, this was an assault I was not quite prepared for. Um, what I should do, because I have the Black Wind over here, I should use this to start picking some of his ships off. If I can. This is an ocean, that's an ocean, yeah. That's 99.9, .9, that one. There we go. I wonder what will happen here. Belsrefs have been spotted. I'll just heal this. Perpentok has completed Guild of the Nine. This stuff has been pillaged. Yeah, we're just going to have these guys fortify here. Our hawk is back at it again. And then the rest of this stack, I'm just going to... Wait, we actually do want to keep a few units here. And there's a Melisindra Hunter here. Can we remove this? 97%. Great. I'm going to leave a couple of diseased corpses back here. So that will be a total of three there. I think that's reasonable. And then move the rest of the stack onwards. So these... Three will just wow. Why did it? Why did I keep my best units out here? Damn, I wanted to like use a keep a bad unit in the city, but instead my most powerful units are staying behind now because they're at the end of the stack for some reason. That's really weird. I was assuming they'd group it in such a way where my most powerful units were at the front of the stack, but instead it's like my most powerful units are at the front and the back of the stack, and the weak ones are in the middle. Just uh, makes for confusing unit management there. Okay, we can move another tile this turn. And here we have more swordsmen from Weevil Pickle and Hide. That apparently I did not see until now approaching my city. Let's just bombard those guys. And I might try to remove them with a longbow. 99.3% odds, why not? <clears throat> okay, there's that ship. Let's see, 99.6% for that, and 99.5. So I got both of those out of the way. Let's see what uh, the next turn brings. Oh yeah, he's, uh, he's bringing the heat at this point. Look at that. So how close are our other units to getting here? A couple more turns this year. One turn, two turns, three turns. Another three turns or so. Uh, but we're not going to waste any time in using our bombardment as quickly as possible. It's just, it's just a puppet, okay. Maybe what I should do is try to get me some experience here by killing puppets. 99.9 .9 there. Did I give me more experience? Yes, it did. So I might get another promotion if he keeps spawning those puppets in opportune places. So this diseased corpse has a promotion coming to it, and that just leaves the entire... Okay, this city as well does not need any promotions um that music is really loud sometimes i can't believe it i don't know if it sounds loud on the recording end of it but here in the game it's like oh obnoxiously loud it's like completely unbalanced compared to the other music in the game it's like i have to zoom this this far out just to make it tolerable i'd like to be zoomed in more but it's such loudly loud and obnoxious soundtrack there. What? I know that wasn't about my best. Okay, I'm just going to set these guys to work their way over here. Seven turns for that stack, and then I'm going to get Guybrush back into my city. I think, anyway. My longbow here is another promotion coming to a couple of promotions. I'm just going to promote for combat there. Okay, that, that little ditty should be over with. Let's zoom back in here. And Blackwind has one more turn to heal. Excellent. Let's see how this siege over here goes. Okay, he's got uh, he's got his full stack here now. Uh, I'm gonna bombard that, of course. 
So that damaged a lot of them. Perpentac converts to Fellowship of Leaves. It damaged all of his units, actually. Um, the one concern, of course, is that he could get past. So maybe I should send one of the Longbowmen over to my capital and then do an exchange program there. Okay, let's try to get one of these triremes. Nice. Oh, and we didn't take any damage, so I'll just stay there. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to have the, that unit fortify. And these frigates just can just keep an eye out. I don't see any other stacks around here. But this uh, its a lot of units. Wow. I, I don't think they're going to be able to take the city in one turn. But it's possible. The good news is that given where our stack is, we could probably head that way next if our city gets taken. He hasn't decided to take it yet, but he has continued bombarding. Down to 23 on my city. Okay, let's take out that trireme. We do not get bombarded much, I have to admit. Maybe I'm going to actually send the guy brush over there as well. Why not? Hey, it looks like a cow was bombarding it. Wow. Why would it show that as the bombardment icon? That's a bit odd. Okay. Is there anything else worth mentioning here? I don't think we can use ships to attack land units. So that would be of no point. Do we have walls to build in here yet? We could always draft units. What do I get? I draft one swordsman, cost one population, plus three for ten turns. The city's already unhappy, though. Why not? We might as well draft something rather than letting them capture it. There we go. So here we go. Gonna promote the swordsman and upgrade it. So we got an extra unit out of that. Hopefully, hopefully they'll help dissuade him from attacking this turn. Because the defenses are down to 2% now. Can we can we draft again? Yeah, we can. Let's do it. Why not? <laughs> there, now we have like four boarding parties in that city. I feel a lot more confident in that. As Malasindra continues to lower my defenses. And apparently he is going to be using this chariot against me as well. Wait, Malasindra is not male. I don't think. Maybe I'm getting that all wrong. Yeah, I should say she. So, here we have a Chariot 7. Diseased Corpse 8. I mean, it is a... Uh, it's a pretty even pairing there. I wish she would stop gallivanting all over the place with that. It makes my life miserable. Let's get this unit out of the way there. That time the black wind did take damage and here we have our first reinforcing units so there's two diseased corpse and another swordsman and we are running a little bit low in gold so we also want to remember to get our bombard in make sure that she doesn't get that advantage let's see if she attacks next turn yeah yeah she did some attacking as you can see Right here, a lot of catapults withdrew. My diseased corpse was destroyed. My boarding party was destroyed. My boarding party was destroyed. It was probably a good thing that I uh, drafted those additional units because this looks kind of bad. I lost a total of three units here. Two of those, that's considered two of those to be boarding parties that I drafted. I drafted two units. Uh, I, w I would be looking pretty badly, especially if I hadn't had those diseased corpses come in. So, uh, I mean, we're just going to bombard them again here with the Ritualist. And hopefully, next turn, we will not lose quite so many units. Maybe what I should do is draft another unit. What would I get? That's another Swordsman. Okay. So, we're going to do the Swordsman and upgrade it again. Wait, that, that Swordsman also can be upgraded. To... I mean, it's still got some pretty bad... Wait, what the hell? What kind of boarding party is this? It's so weak. Why is it only four strength? It has minus one strength for being weak, but 
like has one defense strike. I don't understand it. This unit is weaker than most of the others. Like most of the other ones have seven, and that one doesn't. Yeah, that's a bit weird. I don't. Uh, I'm not really interested in figuring that out. But yeah, there's something odd going on there. Why that unit's so weak? I don't understand. Aside from it just being damaged, okay. This city's probably really unhappy now. After all that drafting, plus seven unhappiness. Oh, hell no, he won't go. Plus nine. That's what it says. That's what the people are saying for me drafting so many of them. Wait, does it affect my other cities as well? No, it doesn't. Just that one city. Uh. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Okay, the London are far too few. I can't get few. I always call it fuel. Oh, it's annoying. The Lanan are far too few. What's our Falmar to do but to take his men and try to win some ships that he can cruise? And now they're no longer at war with each other. But I have lost units here. But so has he. So we lost some more units. Let's see what's up. Uh, boarding party was destroyed. Boarding party was destroyed. Boarding party was destroyed. Boarding party was destroyed. Really, four of them in one turn. Uh, but I did kill one catapult, and I, I think I killed two catapults. Damn, those are bad. Bad, bad odds. 8.5. Down to a ritualist and a diseased corpse. All my boarding parties have been unceremoniously destroyed at this point. Uh, so we are looking quite poorly, then. If that is the case, let me grab these longbowmen here. And in two turns, if we can hold out another couple of turns... The city might yet be saved. Which would be pretty interesting. See, Melisindra continues over here, though, with the mimics and the puppets. So is that still going to be an ongoing problem? I'm not sure. And there is a puppet from Weevil Pickle and Hide there. Overall, the stack is a lot smaller now. We've got a catapult, a couple mimics, but they're pretty strong mimics. Um, I'm going to get this worker out of here. Just so they don't have the satisfaction of capturing a worker. What are the odds with this? 83%. I mean, if we can just hold out one more turn. Or not. We'll see. There's still a few mimics there. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and draft another unit is what I'm going to do. Wait, what else can I do here? And hurry, the money changer. Can I, like, buy a unit that's actually any good? Suppose I bought a diseased corpse. No, that's too expensive. Okay, we're back to drafting units. For what it's worth. Unit upgraded to iron weapons. So now we have a diseased corpse, a ritualist, and a boarding party in there. Eh. We'll probably lose them. But it'll be interesting. Once we have the longbowman in there, we don't have to worry about this anymore, for sure. So let's uh, let's see if we can get after Melisindra here. What I should have done is had some of my other cities start building defensive units. So uh, that's what I'm going to do here in my capital. We're going to work on building an archery range. So this is uh, the do or die moment. We could lose the city this turn. No, we didn't. Well, defending a ritualist killed a catapult. Anything else? Pasture has been destroyed. Oh, that chariot. I ignored it. It's up there pillaging everything in sight. Damn. I didn't... What the hell? That you sneaky little chariot. It withdrew from combat with me. The rat. There we go. <clears throat> you have more ships coming in here trying to cause trouble. That. See what else? Let's see what all the trouble we can find here. There's Guybrush. And now that we have the Longbowman in the city, our troubles should be over. As a matter of fact, uh, Melisindra is leaving. So, yep. That was a good thing we drafted those units. We wouldn't have stood otherwise. Pretty certain the city would have fallen. So... It's a good thing to keep in mind. We're getting closer, though. There will be plenty of uh, 
improvements to repair now with all the pillaging that went on. So do we want to go after Melisindra first? That's a big question. Like here we are right next to Weevil, Pickle, and Hyde. Weevil, Pickle, and Hyde have three, have five cities and we are really close to just taking them all out. Like these are two cities right here are very close to each other. So maybe we should try both of those first. Okie doke. Anything important? Alcindra is still bombarding my defenses. And a plantation has been destroyed. Uh, can we... Harm that unit? Okay, it's a hunter and a catapult. What are my odds here? 99.9 .9 versus that. And my boarding party. 99.9 .9 there. A couple of mimics over here yet. But our longbowmen should hold off the majority of them, because longbowmen are very defensive in cities, which is what I should have had there to begin with. It was just careless of me not to station longbowmen in there. So we should be able to get here in one turn, right? So I could see either of these cities in one turn. Which one is more important? Let's take a weevil and pickle and hide first, I think. I'm just gonna bombard these units right here with the ritualists to get started. Make sure he's off to a bad start in this little war right here that we have going on. And let's take out that galley. And pillage these fishing boats. Just causing the maximum amount of collateral damage we can to those sea resources there. We've constructed an archery here. An archery range, which means that we want to start building a few more longbowmen. As you've seen, the sieges could be a problem. Problem. And I'm also going to upgrade these archers here to a longbow. Wow, we are really low on gold at this point. Maybe I should turn our research down a little bit more. So now we're at up to 62 gold per turn. While defending your diseased corpses killed a puppet. I think it killed something else as well. No, just the puppet. The Elseraphs have been spotted, yes, but they're on their way out for sure at this point. So Falamar, not Falamar, Falamar is my, my unit, my, my Civ is the leader, but Guybrush is my hero. So I'm zoomed all the way out again, because once again, apparently somebody couldn't normalize the audio in this mod. So you'll have some audio tracks that are quite uh, mundane, but you'll have other audio tracks that are ridiculous ridiculously loud so it's very inconsistent in that sense and I don't feel like balancing the audio later so you get what you get and uh, this is one of those games that I play <clears throat> that can actually get flagged by This is one of those games that I play that can actually get flagged by third-party music review systems, which means they try to claim monetization on it. And while I personally don't mind it being monetized, it also means that later on they can file a copyright strike against you if they want to. And that is, um, that is something that I've seen in the past happen, where you will use music and they're initially okay with it and they just grab the monetization from it. And you're like, okay, everything's good. But then later on, what can happen is they'll decide that for whatever reason, they no longer want that music to be on the internet at all. And then they'll issue a copyright strike instead of simply using the monetization on the video. They can re-decide that. So that, that's like an area that you're putting yourself in danger. Anytime you use music that it can be copyrighted by a third party, you're at danger that at some point later on in the future, they could file a copyright strike against you if they wanted to. And so to have like a lot of videos that you, you have that you use the same music and they get flagged for the same thing and then they, they decide that one song let's say one song in this entire playthrough continually gets flagged and then they decide to pull that one song it could pull multiple videos for that because there are a lot of songs here repeat each repeat over and over again because it's civilization and they have like a limited pool to draw from there isn't much of anything here to keep so let's just burn it burn it to the ground and then the rest of these units can skip a turn. Uh, let's see here. Okay, this unit needs to heal. 
We've got another longbow. Uh, that was the one I upgraded. Okay. What do we have here? Caraval. So that's one of Weevil and Pickle and Hides. I think we'll just call him Weevil. Should we call him Hide? Weevil. Doesn't really matter, to be honest. Well, defending your worker was destroyed by a chariot. Where was that? Oh, it's way up here again. Yeah. Those, those things are annoying. I don't like chariots. He's same, she seems to be running all over the place with chariots at the moment. Is she the only one who has horses? Maybe that's why. I don't think we are. Weevil Pickle and Hyde does not have horses. But Malisindra does, which means she's going to be annoying with them as much as she can, apparently. Okay, all of our units in that city have fully healed. Let's just move the rest of this stack. A couple of... One turn to he finish healing all this. It's going to take us two turns to get back into position there. Then we'll take another of Weevil, Pickle, and Hyde's cities. Okay. Workshop has been destroyed by a marauding chariot. Let's see if I can get this thing out of my way. 99.9. Excellent. Another chariot bites the dust. The rest of our units will get within range here. Skip a turn. If that requires whaling boats. Let's pillage these fishing boats here. Here we have another longbow. I'm thinking of sending this longbowman up to one of these cities. Just in case a Malisindra decides to siege it. We're also going to go ahead and build another longbow there in my capital. Oh no! How could things be so bad? Diseased corpse is destroyed by a Belsref swordsman, and a catapult has withdrawn. Where was this? Right over here? Oh wow, that's a big stack. Yeah, two of my um, diseased corpses got destroyed. Remember those are the two lone ones that I used to destroy that one city over here? The Weevil, Pickle, and Hyde city. But the good news is that they're right on top of me, which means a good bombardment should make them quite happy. And unfortunately, we do not have the promotions required to attack this stack in the open, as you can see here. Uh, there are quite a few units there, but I've damaged them pretty significantly at this point. So, I think, okay, like, this unit can attack. Only 91% odds, though. I think I'm going to try to take out this city instead. Or, wait, what we should do here, we should heal for a turn. I'm just going to gather up all these units, and we're going to take spend, uh, as it turns out to be two turns, but we're going to spend some turns there healing. Uh, this worker is just going to be automated, I think. The diseased corpse, send that back to heal up. Pillage the fishing boats. Kill a trireme. We can't attack twice, though, so I'll just, just pull out there a bit. I wonder what Weevil, Pickle, and Hyde's power is at the moment. They've fallen a little bit, as you can see. I think that's Weevil, Pickle, and Hyde. Where's Melisindra? Okay, I'm this person. This, wait, you can see me dip there because I lost those units in that one city. But yeah, Weevil, Pickle, and Hyde is the weakest sieve. So like, this is their last gasp, I imagine. The stack of swordsmen there. They really don't have anything else to go on. It'll be interesting to see if they attack me here. Okay, no, apparently they did the smart thing and just sent all those units into the city. So now I have an even easier... Uh, time of killing them all because my units are promoted for city attacking So I mean that's plenty convenient. I guess it paid to wait a turn there You're just gonna hear hear a lot of winning I think This is the power of the infernals <laughs> I'm not the infernal, but I do have the religion of uh, the Ashen Veil. 99.9. Still have some swordsmen in there. Even my ritualists are winning against this. Wonder about my hill giants. 99.5. Not quite as good. 96.0. That ritualist was 99.9. I wonder what my hunter's odds are. 98.3. How did I get diseased? That's interesting. 
It doesn't matter though. I can always uh, heal my units with my Ritualist. Let's try using this Hill Giant. And 9.9. .9. I wonder what's in here. Just the Mage Guild. Burn it. Burn it to the ground. So in one turn, reduced his entire defensive stack to nothing. Okay. Everybody else just skip a turn here if you don't mind. Including you, Catapults. Okay. Got some more longbows here. I think we're good now on the longbow front. I mean, I could send it to the, one of the cities up here. Maybe I should do that instead. Pillaging. Attacking. And retreating. All in the life of a black wind. We could do Purge of the Unfaithful. Nature's Revolt. I probably should build walls there. <sighs> I've just constructed a courthouse here. Can we just, like, automate this city? To build good stuff. I'm not sure I can trust them. As you'll notice here though, even though we got the workers back, this worker is automated, I believe. No, this one's just sleeping, okay. I was gonna say they're still not rebuilding, they're not re-improving the land here that was destroyed. Because they're weird like that. How is the city doing now? They're still unhappy about the drafts, obviously. But hopefully that should be wearing down with time. So I think we are really committing ourselves to Weevil, Pickle, and Hide here. Now, Malisindra has one, two, three, four, at least five cities over here. As many as Weevil, Pickle, and Hide did. So it really didn't make much, much of a difference in that sense. But we've gotten a head start here on the Weaves, the Picks, and the Hides. All three of them. Combined in one basket of awful. Okay, people are getting promotions. Heal that one unit that got diseased inadvertently. And I might spend a turn on that neutral tile there. He, they're healing next turn. Let's get the workshop built. And our ritualist is due for another promotion. Can, let's promote... Wait, for melee combat, yes. Because that's what we were being attacked with. I'm pretty sure those are melee units. The mimics, I think they're called. I'm pretty sure the mim mim mimics are melee units. <clears throat> okay, now that it's been a couple of turns, I'm just going to go ahead here and check Weevil Pickle and Hyde's power after that epic loss. And as you can see, they have fallen off very significantly. Their power has been reduced by half, I'd say, at this point. Constructed a forge, and work has begun on something else. Two turns to heal the entire stack. Sounds good. Something I'm interested in, in, in investing in. Uh, so this is really weird. They build a fishing boat here just to prove how worthless they are. Oh, wait, no. I, I take that back. Actually, we can use the fishing boats. We can use it to build a pirate cove. Hey, the AI is not so stupid after all. I spoke too soon. Let the black wind heal. We're off to another turn of the races here. Apparently, he decided not to attack me with that stack of units there. He has a few more mimics, if I'm not mistaken. And they're just swordsmen. Apparently, Melisindra is the only one with the mimics. Malisindra and, of course, Parpentak, but we're not fighting Parpentak, nor will we ever be fighting Parpentak. More workers, apparently. Apparently, we can't have too much work, too many workers, according to the AI, because it allows them to get killed by using them rather dangerously. Okay, I think we've effectively destroyed and pillaged the entire coast there. The next thing to do is just um, blockade the whole place to prevent them from working the sea tiles. Tower of Eyes. Free dungeon in every city. Why not? Let's build that. Can we just have the city automated as well? Thank you. That way I don't have to deal with the tedious buildings being built. Like, oh, we need a granary. Oh, we need a lighthouse. A forge. blah -de blah I'm going to scout ahead here. Looks like everything is... Why do we... Oh, yeah, we only can move one tile per turn. Because we're moving into enemy land there. And another promotion here for my Black Wind. I guess we're going to go with Retreat. Ah, uh, just to retreat. Let's destroy that fishing boat there. I'm just going to blockade here for now. And as you can see, when you click on units after you have them blockade, it will display an overlay over the sea. To sort of give you an idea of what's being blockaded. That didn't used to be the case. I think in Warlords, you, could, you wouldn't, weren't able to see that. But with Beyond the Sword, as an expansion pack, they allowed you to see the blockade radius. And that hawk is annoying me. I meant to click this. 
More workers, apparently. You rats. Stop it with the freaking workers. Obnoxious. Too many. Too many workers. What the hell? I hate that. Look, it just they send it back into the city and tell it to go to sleep. Why are we building so many workers? I can't trust them so much of the time. They build me garbage. There was a library that could be built in that city, which would be absolutely valuable. Because if we take a look at it, we are making 21 research here. It's not insignificant. We have a couple of good towns next to it producing gold. You could have built a library, but instead you go for the workers all the time. Even though they're sitting in my city sleeping. Not all of them are granted, but I automated one over here and immediately went to the city and fell asleep. Look, this is an automated worker. It's sleeping. It's sleeping in the city. But, you know, what can I do with that? Hmm? I don't know. They just don't work. That's basically what it comes down to. Okay. One tile away. Let's preemptively bombard that. Not many units in that city, obviously. I think I accidentally fortified the entire stack there, but that won't matter. Next turn, I will undo it. What is this other worker building? There's another worker here. And it doesn't tell... Oh, it's going somewhere. It's going all the way up there. Instead of actually improving the tiles here that need to be improved, it decided to walk all the way up there. This tile does not have an improvement on it, guys. The tile can be worked by the city. Would it not make more sense to use the unit that is already next to the city to improve the tiles the city needs instead of sending it somewhere else? Apparently not. Astrologers report that the sleeping dragon has moved into prominence. This constellation is sacred in <laughs> sacred to Killmorph. Yeah, we are not of the Killmorph religion, though, obviously. I'm not sure why it gives you those events if you're not of the required religion. It seems pretty redundant and a bit of a time waste. What do we got here? 94% odds. These archers are pretty brutal. I'm not promoted to fight archers usually. And we're down to an adept. And another adept. And a third adept. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Burn all that. Burn it all to the ground. And these units can skip turn. Oh, look. I want a worthless worker here. Let's delete that. Let the hawks fly. Okay. We're moving along quite nicely here. I wonder if I'll be able to take out the required um, cities to remove Weevil, Pickle, and Hide in this episode yet. It might be a bit of a challenge. So we might be calling it quit be quits before that. So that way we, we'll, <clears throat> we'd have a, a decently sized episode to finish up with for this scenario. So we can all join these units on one tile. Like that. Heal for one turn. And then we'll be ready to go again. So that's pretty nice. Oh my goodness. A puppet has withdrawn from combat with your diseased corpse. Yes, he sent us another small skirmish force here against me. Not that that was... Not that that will do anything to stop me, obviously. Split up. Break it up and wake up. Here we go. What do we got? 99.5 against that. 99.8. 99.9. Oh, he's actually sending out another settler. The filthy rat. That's what he was up to. He was up to spreading his filth throughout the lands. I'm using a giant to do this. Get rid of that puppet so that way I can come back on the same turn. Quite easily. Heal for a turn. Let's help this worker here build a farm. So. How are we looking? Any more settlers? I think that was his last settler. Promote for city attack. Let's get all of these units onto that same tile. Come on. We can do some scouting with a hawk here. Build a road there. On to the next turn. We are on turn 347 at the moment. And there goes that worker back to sleep in the city when I automated it. Why do I even bother? Okay, two turns away from this city. It's not his capital, but it's a close second. 
Oh no, but defending your worker was destroyed by a ball sort of puppet. Yeah. That's what happens when the workers move all over the place like that. Okay, we are in range. Let's uh, do everything we can to make a first impression a lasting one. What do we have here? Another sad worker that came to me to be automated and therefore put to sleep in the exact self-same city. Uh, okay, they're at war with me again. No big surprise there. Okay, the defenses are reduced to what? Okay, we have reduced the defenses completely. So let the siege begin. Burn it to the ground. Okay, here we have that hawk again. Just skip a turn for these units. Very nice. Okay, he, we're down to his last city. Let's see if we can get this done in a reasonable amount of time here. The farm has been destroyed by a moronic Balsarif chariot. This will actually end on a very nice note, because we'll have to deal with this attack next episode. I'm going to focus on ignoring that this episode. We're going to press as hard as we can here. Two turns to get to that city, and everything will be good then, hopefully. Let's get this uh, black wind over here. Come on. The most advanced, I am Thelmar the Great. Perpentak is ahead of me. So let's get... Oops. Get the hawk out of the way. Get all these units right next to the city. Of course, we're going to deal a little bit of fire and fury there. Or do some defenses. Like so. We got another great profit. We're just going to have him skip a turn. The stack advances, but of course we have a longbowman in that city. So I'm not too worried yet. On to next turn. This is the make or break turn. I want to remove Weevil, Pickle, and Hide this turn. Or we don't at all. Okay. Let's grab all of these Ritualists. Bombard there. For one hell of a fire. 99.9% .9 odds. 99.9. 99.9. 78.5, whatever. <laughs> Attacked anyway. That was 99.9, 99.9. 99.9. 99.8. 99.9, 99.9, and we have the Weevil Pickle on Hides destroyed. I hate losing. Do you know how many people I'm going to have to kill before I start to feel better? And burn it to the ground. Okay, so there, we have officially taken out another Balsaref civilization. That was Weevil Pickle on Hide. We have also taken out Duke Salos this turn, leaving the one contender of Malasindra yet to deal with, who actually is one of the only civilizations who managed to mount a couple of attacks against me. And these are not insignificant attacks either. Uh, this is something that will be very interesting to see if I can deal with in the next turn. As you can see, her power continues to grow, despite mine pretty much leveling off right there. So um, yeah, she's above me in power. We'll see if we can deal with this. I think with the long bowman that we have and that we can build, should preemptively build one right here, so that way next uh, next episode we don't have to worry about that. Um, next episode, despite being most likely the last, I think we can win it in one more episode with our stack here. Our stack is well promoted. Um, it could still be quite interesting on the home front if she starts to capture some of my villages. So that pretty much does it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching as always, and hope to see you next time.